I've started this video a few times, and it's honestly difficult to describe the role that MITRE played in the vulnerability management ecosystem and the potential danger that this announcement of it ending could be. And so I just want to start by saying what happened and then explain why it's important and then briefly talk about some of the options that are available going forward. So first, what happened is there was a letter leaked initially that MITRE, the contract for the CVE system had run out and it was no longer going to be maintaining it. And some additional context from Brian Krebs here is that at this point, it seems like CNAs will still be able to assign CVEs in the short term, but really we don't fully know what's going to happen. And I think most people don't know exactly how the vulnerability system works. And so I wanted to put together a diagram and there are a lot of other people in here because I shared it recently on LinkedIn. But I wanted us to just walk through about how does a vulnerability disclosure become a finding? Because it honestly communicates how MITRE was at the center of the entire thing and how without them, the whole ecosystem falls apart. And so the first thing is that when you discover a vulnerability, you can either report it to a CVE numbering authority, which is called a CNA, and the CNA then ingests it, and they are given blocks of CVE numbers by MITRE. And so an example of that is here, I can just go to one of these GitHub security advisories that have been published, and you can see they give it their own ID for their own tracking and enrichment, but then they give it one of their CVE IDs, and that gets published to CVE.org, which is maintained by MITRE. And this is essential because all of these different providers rely on MITRE as the source of truth for a CVE. And just to pick another example here, you can see Red Hat has taken this CVE and decided to give it a moderate impact, whereas Ubuntu has taken that same CVE and given it a high priority. And that's great. Honestly, different companies should feel entitled to give different vulnerabilities, different scores. But at the end of the day, we need a standardized way to talk about vulnerability management. And this is essential to making this stuff work across the entire industry, as we'll see. But at the end of the day, these CVEs get assigned and pushed to CVE.org, which is maintained by MITRE, which is funded by the Department of Homeland Security. Then the NVD, which is the National Vulnerability Database, picks up those vulnerabilities, and they're funded by the Department of Commerce, and they add a lot of this enrichment score. And so that's stuff like the CVSS, which is the criticality score, which we all love to complain about. Oh, it's a 9.7, but I wasn't vulnerable, et cetera. And then they add CWEs, which most people don't use, but they're actually super important because here I can see just from the fact that this is an improper authorization with software weakness, that it's probably going to get a high CVSS score, which it did. But I could do that by going through here to just see, oh, what are examples of SSRF vulnerabilities? And I can see that's probably going to be like a mid to high vulnerability. If it's something that's involving hard-coded keys, that's going to be a critical. It's a great quick way to reference common weaknesses in software. And they do some other enrichment as well, like the CPEs, which love them or hate them are a critical part of determining, hey, here are all of the versions of a software that are vulnerable, because otherwise that's also another question is when did this actually get fixed? What specific version was it on before and after it got fixed? The NVD has been the source of a lot of controversy because they have a massive backlog and they have deferred enrichment for many of their vulnerabilities. And so they were the big source of controversy before MITRE shutting down. And so that's why some third-party Vuln enrichment vendors like VulnCheck and VulnDB and some other ones stepped in to try to do some additional enrichment specifically for security scanners. And so all of these scanners are the tools that we love to hate and buy. And these scanners pick up this enriched data, whether from third-party providers, whether from the CNAs directly, like in the GitHub Security Advisor case, as well as what's called KEV from CISA. And this is known exploited vulnerabilities, and this is CISA will let you know when they know a vulnerability has been exploited in the wild, usually through firewall logs. They are looking at times that a firewall has recognized that there was an attempt to do a vulnerability exploit. And none of these things are perfect, right? You could complain at length about CVE is too slow, NVD has a huge backlog and enriches stuff wrong, CISA has biased data going into Kev. There are issues here, but a fire miter stop working was never the way people wanted this to go and it really creates a fundamental collapse and panic within the entire cybersecurity ecosystem because without them there is no standardized way to talk about cves in the first place and so the three possible things then that can happen in response to this to move to that is first is a private cna steps up to fill their place 
GitHub, Google, and Microsoft are probably the best position to do this. GitHub, because of the security advisories that they put out, are already pretty good, and they have a lot of the software ecosystem already with them. Microsoft and Google, because of their funding and the amount of resources that they can put to doing this. And that's the key challenge here is that this is not a technical problem as much as a coordination problem. And that's what makes it so hard to solve is it is not hard to create a vulnerability database. You can see even the janky, this obviously sucks, but it is no SQL. This is what was linked to as the backup of the CVE database is just the GitHub of all of the JSONs describing every CVE. The data is not the hard part as much as how do you get all of these different vendors? There's 450 different CNAs. How do you get them all to communicate and get on the same page about a vulnerability and what it's doing? And without this, I showed GitHub's advisory number, but then just for an example, Sneak in their vulnerability database also has specific numbering that they use for them. And so when you start passing these different IDs around that aren't standardized across vendors, it creates a pretty massive issue across the entire ecosystem. And so that could be potentially what we're looking at is just the entire collapse of vulnerability management as a whole, which sucks and it's bad and this is really stupid. There's a global component to all of this where at VulnCon last year, a lot of representatives were there from around the world talking about how they wanted their countries to build something like what we had with MITRE and NVD because it is really the standard for how to do vulnerability management and how to make software more secure is by patching these different issues that are discovered and fixing them. So without that, if this loss happens, we will really lose a lot of global presence within the industry, software will get less secure. And the worst part is like, there could have been a way to do this to transition to the global vulnerability database, but this just isn't the way to do it. So a couple other resources that are out there, Tom Mulrich is great. He's the lead of the SBOM group with OWASP. And he's talking about creating, and he's been talking about for a while, creating a global vulnerability database that could come out of this. Adam Showstack is great to follow. He basically invented a lot of this stuff or was around the invention of a lot of this stuff. And so he's following it and pointing people towards some resources for what can be done. But honestly, the next few days are going to be crazy as everyone sort of praise that GitHub, Microsoft, or Google picks this up because we've created these like tech monopolies that we just pray, please, Jeff Bezos, make a database for us. Because the, the only alternative is doing an open source thing and praying that it gets adoption, which is an option and might work. But without the government doing it, we don't have many great options for it. So sick.